I just want to make you aware of a bill that was introduced a couple weeks ago. Um, it's kind of a backdoor gun ban. Uh, not for everybody, but for the poor people. The bill is called H.R. 5103. It's the Gun Violence Prevention and Safe Communities Act of 2018. It was introduced on February 27, 2018. And just a quick summary here of what the bill is. Uh, the bill amends the Internal Revenue Code with respect to excise tax on the sale of firearms by manufacturers, producers, or importers to increase the rate of such tax to 20% on pistols, revolvers, and other firearms, or any lower frame or receiver for a firearm, and impose a 50% tax on shells and cartridges. The bill exempts any department agency or instrumental, basically it exempts any government from having to pay these taxes. This reminds me exactly of what the, uh, the Democrats and other politicians did back in the 90s, maybe the 80s, with cigarettes. If you remember right back then, there was a big push to get people away from smoking. So the way that they came up with a, a solution for that was to raise the tax and the price on cigarettes so much that most people couldn't afford it. And uh, if they could, they would basically go broke smoking. It did a good job pushing people away from cigarettes, but cigarettes are bad for you. And the Second Amendment is in place so that whether you're rich or poor, you still have the ability to protect yourself, your, your loved ones, and especially your kids. Where this bill is gonna hurt the most is a single mother or maybe a, a couple just out of college. They got a, a three-year-old kid, college debt. They're, they're working on establishing themselves in a, in a career type job, but they're not quite there yet. They won't be able to pick themselves up any sort of protection to protect themselves or their family. We know we need to keep the, the guns out of drug dealers, and that's supposed to be what all these bills are aimed towards, is keeping the guns out of bad people's hands. But drug dealers make thousands of dollars every weekend. They don't have any problem paying an additional 50% out of box of ammo. Uh, it's the people that actually want to train and get more proficient with a firearm to be more effective, to, uh, to minimize error. That's who's going to be affected by this bill. So it's actually sickening. At least the other bills... Uh, you know where they're heading. This, these people here are directly aiming this bill at the poor people, the single mother, the, uh, the poor couple. So I just wanted to point that out to you. And also, if you heard uh, Eric Holder back in, I believe, the 80s, maybe the early mid-90s, he was talking about how they, need, how they needed to be persistent in brainwashing the public. Uh, I've also asked the school board to make a part of every day some kind of anti-violence, anti-gun message. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different- I imagine the backlash by the Democrats if somebody actually said that about speech. So the, there's no difference between the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. And unfortunately, some of these politicians don't quite understand that. I wanted to just uh, alert you guys to this. What scares me about a, a smaller bill like this is that it gets thrown into a pile with a bunch of big titled bills, the ones that the NRA and other gun owners of America are concentrating on. And some of these smaller bills like this get pushed through. and We don't even know about it. And then all of a sudden, um, we're like, what the hell happened? So...